welcome everyone for the Thursday evening lecture, the games you should know by heart. I mean, this game is not uh, a very, very famous game. I just, I remember when I started to play chess, I, it was, you know, I saw this game by Petrosian, world champion number nine, and it had a really good influence on me. And uh, it's a really nice positional game, and it ends with a, a very nice uh, tactical shot at some point, okay? So I don't think you probably will be familiar with this game, but uh, that's why I want to share this game with you today. So the game is by Tigran Petrosian versus Vladimir Simagin, Moscow Championship in 1956. They played a match for the championship, and knight f3, knight f6, c4. Petrosian was very positional player, so he chose this quiet setup. And now c6. So which opening uh, Simagin is trying to transpose into? Do you know? Slav defense, exactly. He wants to play d5 next and play a Slav defense. That's what he's trying to do. So knight c3, d6. It's strange though, because it, he could play d5 and play the Slav, but now he, he played the move d6 instead. Uh, you know, the c6, d6 is... Uh, so Petrosian, of course, says, you know, I'll take the center, why not? Now g6. So it's some kind of a King's Indian defense where Black had played c6. I'm not sure if this is the, you know, it's not a bad move, but it's also not so clear if this is anything uh, really special. So both players are castling. It's like the classical position where Black played the move c6. So Bishop g4. This move, uh, nowadays, you know, people, the, the trend is, you know, people usually don't want to play Bishop g4 because this move just gives up the bishop, and usually white is just comfortable with the pair of the bishops. Like after h3, you know, I don't think uh, I don't think Petrosian did this, but take, take, and usually it's not so clear where, you know, what really black has here for giving the bishop here. I would really enjoy to play this position with the white pieces. So uh, take, take. He played knight bd7, bishop e3. Uh, that didn't happen. Sorry, he played the bishop e3 move. Petrosian went here, knight bd7, and again h3 could be played, but knight d2 played. Um, let me explain the uh, the reason behind this move. Uh, it looks like um, position is going to be closed in some point after e5, and that's why White prefers to have uh, you know the knights instead of the pair of the bishops. Uh, it's not so clear if 92 moves is even better than h3, but that's kind of what he chose. And it's known in the king's Indian positions that you want to exchange the light square bishop. That's kind of considered the uh, benefit for white, if you exchange the light square bishop. That's just a general rule to remember, okay? So takes, takes e5. When e5 is played, if you want to have an advantage, you have to play which move? d5, yeah? You have to have a space advantage. Otherwise, he's going to take on d4, bishop takes d4, rook e8. You know, like you play something like this, it just doesn't look like you have much, you know? After rook e8, queen c7, not so much you have, okay? So he played uh, d5, c5. Now, Simagin closes the position, but uh, I see this oftentimes, people close the position and kind of feel safe, that they feel like it's, you know, I'm never going to lose this, it's so locked up, you know. But this position is actually a, a pretty big advantage for block. Uh, could you tell me maybe why I'm saying that it's a pretty big advantage here for white? The reasons. In the back, yes? Well, he's going to try at least. He's going to try at least, but his attacking ideas without the light square bishop are not very effective. First of all, okay? Black needs to have a light square bishop to have an attack here. That's the very first idea you should know. Uh, another thing is space. Remember, this pawn is on d5. What does that mean? I have more space because my pawn is in his territory. The first four ranks is for white. That's white's territory. The other four is blocks. You have a pawn in his territory, that means you have a space advantage. So this pawn is very annoying for him because it's guarding c6 and e6. It's making things quite difficult. So now he goes through b1, threatening to play b4. Trying to get some contra play. So knight e8. 
f3. The reason he plays f3 because he would like to, uh, when f5 is played, he doesn't want to be trapped after f4, so he wants to have the square that he can put the bishop on. And b4. You, b4 is a typical idea here. You want to push the pawn to create <coughs> contraplay. So c takes b4. It's, ha it's hard to say if this is the best or maybe just uh, more solid b6 is better. But in, 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 uh, it depends, you know, both positions, white should be slightly better. It depends what he does. Takes rook b4, b6. You know, perhaps he was thinking maybe I can attack this pawn and I have this outpost for my knight. Now, Petrosian plays a4 with idea a5 at some point. This is how you attack the pawn chain with a5 and putting pressure. Bishop f6, king h1. A prophylactic move with the idea to be able to go bishop g5 at some point and moving the bishop, uh, king away from all the uh, diagonal checks. Bishop g5. He's trying to exchange the bishop. That's a correct play by, uh, by black because his dark square bishop is not good. If you look at the dark square bishops here, my dark square bishop, white dark square bishop is much better because it has a lot more scope. But this one is kind of blocked up. So that's why it's not so good. Bishop g1. Do you see now why he played the move king h5? So he can secure that square for his bishop. Knight c7 comes in. Rook b1. Now black gets the knight on c5. And now one pair of knights will come out. Again, knight takes c5 was another possibility, but b takes c6. It doesn't look that bad, actually, this position. It looks like uh, you know, fairly, fairly balanced position. Perhaps white is a little bit better because you know black now has this before square. And now Petrosian took because he realized if black puts the knight on before and then play a6, pretty solid. So that's why he's trying to do something different. So he takes. And now, what do you think he played here? Absolutely. He's trying to get the e4 square, OK? He's trying to get the e4 square for the knight. So he played g4, and then if captured now, he wants to put a knight on e4, so he has pressure. Takes knight e4. That is a very, very strong outpost on e4, OK? Outpost is when a piece is placed somewhere like that, and it cannot be removed by opponent pawn. That is a very, very strong square. See, he could have captured back with the pawn here, but he, he thought this is stronger to do this idea first. Bishop f4. If white captures the pawn, he's going to run into some problems. Rook f3. King is quite exposed here. And now check. And now this rook comes in. Look at that. That rook is still stuck here. This rook is on a seventh rank. And with so many threats here, this is just going to be simply over. And if he goes queen g8 here, trying to propose the exchange, do you see the instant victory here for white? Which move are you going to play here to win everything? Knight f6. Correct. Correct knight f6. Yes, attacking the queen. And if he takes it, you will just take on h7 and say checkmate. Got it? So, um, that's why he played bishop f4. At least he wants to have the f file locked. See, nobody wants to take that pawn. Rook b7. Rook belongs where, everybody? And open file and seventh rank. That's seventh rank. You see that? Seventh rank. It belongs on a seventh rank. That's what it is, okay? Knight goes on c7. F takes g4. Knight e8.
g5. Now idea is to go queen h5. He is trying to activate the queen. Again, this rook is stuck here. The knight on e4 is fantastic. Queen c8 now. He's trying to attack the rook. Now what would be the best move here? To move the rook, protect the rook. What would be the best move in this position? Our rook is under attack. Think, don't rush, think a little bit, and then decide on it. When, one, one, one thing I want to suggest to you, when you have a really good position, if, unless you see a clear win, don't sacrifice anything. Try to maintain your position, okay? If you have a clear win, you go for it. Go ahead. Excellent job. Rook e7, that's what Petrosian did. Now... He can even go to e6 if needed. That's a very good positional move, okay? Excellent job. He maintained your position, okay? No need to sacrifice. So now he goes queen h3, trying to get active. Now, queen looks kind of annoying there. What can we do here? Absolutely. Kush, kush the piece away, right? Now he goes queen g4. Continue. Don't rush, don't rush. Just just don't rush. Take your time because we still have to play precise here. Okay, yes. Your queen is under attack. Your queen is pinned. Rook f4, I can take it. Something better. That queen seems still pretty active on g4. What can we do to do something with the queen, perhaps? Queen d3, he moved away. He was pinned, he moved away, and now look at that, he's setting up a tactic, takes, and queen h7 checkmate. Now, you know, he goes for this sacrifice, bishop h2, rook takes f8, queen now threatening mate, so he sacrificed the rook because he was going to lose it anyway, and takes. Now, two pieces versus a rook and a pawn, but this six, this six pawn is still very, very weak. Rook e7, he's hoping to go rook f7 and try to get active. Knight takes d6. This pawn is very important to eliminate because his whole chain is now going to be very, very weak, okay? And now he goes queen g5. Queen f1 check. Knight e4 comes back. Back to the outpost. Queen h4 putting pressure. Queen e2 protecting it. Now getting ready to push. Rook g7. Black is trying to come up with some kind of tricks, you know? You just push. Queen h6, trying to do a checkmate on you. Queen c1, check. Bishop g1, takes and mate. What would be the best move here to protect against that threat? Queen c1 is very, very strong. Don't rush. Uh, I don't think you want to move that much away. Queen d1, protect everything safe, okay? Queen h4, attacking the knight. Now, continue. Protect. He actually repeated once and went queen f1. Now that's why he goes queen f1. He, originally he played the move queen d1 to protect against the background check, but then he realized after queen h4, threatening the knight, he just decided to go on f1 because that way now he's covering the f file and also the c1 square, and now he wants to try to push. Like for example, the threat is to push, and if you capture, I have a knight f6 check. Picking out the rook. So that's why he played rook f7. Queen g2 check. King f8. Still, there are some tricks because queen is very active. He wants to come here and check you. Now knight g5. I like this move because this move blocks the queen and also threatening to win the rook. 
But the most important thing is that you want to keep the, the queen blocked here. Queen takes d6. And now, very important moment here. Because this, this idea is very famous. That's why I choose this game today, because of this particular idea. Try to, to play like world champion Petrosian here. You've seen this one? It's famous, yeah. Huh? Queen A8, check. Look, everybody. Check. So if the king comes up here on E7, queen A7, check, and you take on F7. OK? Wins. Queen E7, check, you take here. So he has to, so this loses immediately, to queen A7, check, and take on F7. So he has to go king to g7. Don't rush, don't rush. It's even here, even here you have to be more precise because you have so many possibilities here. I got it. Queen to uh, h8, check. Very close. Bishop e5, check first. Because now what happens was if you go here, check, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to deflect me and then have a very nice fork to win the queen. But the problem is I have this move king to g6, and it's not, not so clear. I mean, you're still probably doing well, but. Uh, yeah. okay. So Claudio's idea is bishop e5 check, because now you are forcing, you're forcing him to take, because the queen is under attack. So he takes, and now. We go back to your idea, queen h8 check. This is called deflection or decoy. So you now give him another check. First you sacrifice the bishop to force the queen to that square. And then you sacrifice the queen. And after he takes, you go knight f7 check. King comes up here and then you pick up the queen. And now you're in a winning end game here. Because next you're going to try to win the uh, c5 pawn. So in this position he resigned because of that idea. So, so that's, uh, yeah, because he resigned because you just simply, you just check and you win this piece, okay? So it was a really positional game in a King's Indian defense. Uh, I wanna just go over through the opening because we had some people who came in a little bit late so, so they can see this opening, okay? So let's go back and just spend a little bit time on the opening. So the game started with knight f3, knight f6, c4, c6. From the first glance, it looks like black is trying to transpose into the Slav defense via, via c6, d5 move order. That's what it looks like. But then he makes a bit uh, strange move, d6. So it's a little bit more conservative way of playing. He's trying to play, you know, it's almost like he changed his mind. He wanted to play the Slav, but then he just decided to play c6. So now he went for this opening, which is like a King's Indian with a move c6. Casa bishop g4. This bishop e3 is fine. Uh, this knight e2 move is, is interesting, but also you can have, if, you, if you're ever in a position like this, I recommend you also consider the move h3, because this way you attack the bishop. If the bishop goes here, you simply chop it. So against this pawn structure, you cannot go back on h5, retreat. You're going to get trapped. And if you go here, d5 traps the bishop. Okay. So you have to take, you have to take on f3, bishop takes f3, and I really like this position because white has two bishops, very comfortable, you know, strong center, and, uh, you know, you know long-term advantage here. So, but he, he played knight e, d2, he wanted to exchange the light square bishops, queen e2, e5, d5. This move is very important to play because if you don't play d5, you're likely not going to have an advantage. So it's important for you to play the move d5. Uh, rook ad1 uh, simply runs into ed, ed, rook e8 idea. Okay. d5, c5, rook b1. Position like this, again, I mentioned earlier, it looks like it's kind of safe for black. Everything is closed, but it doesn't mean black is equalized. White has actually a pretty substantial advantage here, thanks to which factors here? 
D5 pawn. D5 pawn. Arjun? More space. Absolutely. That's D5 pawn is already in the black's territory, and that's going to give you a really good positional advantage. Positions like this, you cannot just win right away if you're playing strong players. So it looked like it's going to be a long game, but you can really improve this position. And uh, so one of the plans here is to try to play rook ab1 with b4 to open up the position. Usually, you play on a king side. So remember, when you're white against king's Indian defense, you play on the queen side usually. Black is the one who is going to try to play on the king side. So back here, just protect. Another very important moment in the game, in my opinion, this, for example, move king h1. From the first glance, it doesn't look like this move is doing anything. It almost seems like sort of an empty move, right? But if you think a little bit deeper, you see the idea, right? The idea is when bishop g5 comes in to initiate the exchange, you ready to play which move? You don't want to exchange the dark square bishops here. You want to keep them. And that's why he, he vacated that square for the, for the bishop to go to, to bishop to g1. Knight c7. Rook b1. Why, why did you go back then? Why did you go back to the rook to b1? Because after knight a6, your rook is going to get hit anyway. So he's just he's going back to protect his first rank. Yeah. It was going to attack you anyway. Knight b3. Oh, yeah, that's another It's a good question, actually. Because if you go knight b3 here, your rook is going to get trapped. See? If you try something like this, after this, you're going to get trapped. The rook has no squares to go to. Never put your pieces in a positions like this, you know, like uh, where you're kind of boxing, boxing it in, you know? Because if you box it in, it's just going to get trapped after a5. So you don't want that. b1. Knight c5, takes, and yeah, this is a crucial moment here. It seems like white should just keep everything it is, but then he just, he, Petrosian realized that he needs to change the character of the position here and get that beautiful outpost for the knight only four. Do you remember how he did that? Go ahead. No, no. Remember, you want to try to get the knight. Knight in. Well, if you start with g4, the problem is he will take you, and there's no outpost. So your knight is not getting the square. So you want to take the pawn first. If he takes back with the rook, once again, this would be a very strong outpost for your knight. Okay, This piece cannot be removed from here. And it's blockading the e-pawn, but also putting lots of pressure to this target. The d6 pawn is a very, very weak pawn in this position. So if you can get a position like this, you have an outpost only for you always want to do that. Okay? So, of course, black takes this way. He's trying to control the e4 square. And now? G4. Absolutely g4. Yes. Now you're trying to exchange here and put the knight on e4. See, so this, this idea could be a little bit difficult to do over the board because you're sort of, first you give up the center, then you make a g4, you know, weakening move. I mean, it's a little bit against the, you know, the, the principles, you know, but again, the, the putting the knight only four will solve all your problems and you'll have a very nice advantage. So takes knight e4, you know, if you capture here, you run into a risk of getting into a very strong, you know, under very strong attack here. Check. Rook comes in, in. Now the threat is checkmate. So let's say he tries to defend. And you remember the winning move here? He's trying to exchange the queens. But here, for a moment, you forget that. You forget your queen is hanging. And try to find another attacking move here. And you're going to win this. Knight to f6, attacking the queen. And if takes, look at that. And this is called what kind of mate? Arjun. Mm -hmm. Arabian mate, yes. Very nice. So um, he blocked it. And you still enter with a rook. 
knight c7, capture, capture. Yeah, g5 is played with the idea of queen h5. That would be very strong. So, but black played a good move, queen to c8, attacking the rook. Rook e7, queen h3, activating the queen. Queen is very active, and black actually played well the sequence of the uh, of the game because he was just it was very annoying. He kept trying to do some tricks, some tactics, you know. So white had to be careful to avoid that. Bishop h2. That's a nice tactic because you know, I mean, positionally it's lost, so he's trying to do some tactic. And if you take, he's going to take on f3. And now you take on f8, and now it seems like he's got a threat on you. And he's got a threat on you here. But what are you going to do now? What are you going to do to stop against those threats? Yes? Correct. You take two minor pieces, OK? Two minor pieces. And now this six pawn is very weak. Very, very weak. OK? I'm just going to take it. Rook e7, knight d6. Once the d6 pawn falls, the whole position now for black is just slowly going to fall apart. If you, if you play carefully, you should win this now. Takes, check. Again, it's important for you to protect the back rank. Remember the back rank, yeah? Always protect your back rank, your seventh rank. These are important things to do during the game. Check. Pulls back. And you push. And remember another idea, pass pawns meant to be pushed. So whenever you control everything, you start pushing your pawn. That's how you start using this. It's possible that Petrosian maybe had another ways to win. If you run this position with the computer, probably you can find a little bit more direct ways he could have won. But still, I think his technique was pretty precise. So now they just repeat it a little bit. And then he went back to where with the queen, to keep the king cut off. f1. See that? He keeps the king cut up away from the pawn and threatening d7 push and accommodate it with the knight f6 check. So he goes here, check. And again, this threat is very annoying. Queen c1, so he plays knight g5 to stop it. Queen d6. If he doesn't take, then it's not so clear what to do against the checks. So knight is under, rook is under attack, so he went here. And now we come to the, the famous moment in this game. This is why this game is quite, quite famous. Arjun, queen a8 check. And this is called a long range move. You know, it's type of move that sometimes you can miss, you know, but always look for the long range moves because oftentimes these are the moves you're going to try to do, you know, to, to win it. Now, if he goes king e7, you just check and you win. So he has to go king to g7. And now don't rush. This is again, when you see a good move, you pause and try to see if you have something even better than that. Something else forcing. Yes? Bishop takes pawn. Yeah, okay. Bishop takes pawn. Yeah. <laughs> Now he takes back because the queen is under attack. He has to. You're luring in. You lure the queen in, and now one more deflection needed. You see the move? Okay, go ahead. Excellent job. Another long range move. Queen sacrifice. If the king moves away, you're simply going to pick up the queen. Okay, he went here. Now we go check here. And we pick up the queen. And that's the game. Okay, so Petrosian Simagin uh, from 1956, actually. So this was a very, very famous game, okay? Okay, I want to do a little bit of end game work with you. So we'll do one end game position to see if you understand what you need to do, okay? And this is going to be about the, you know, this, this, this position I have for you, okay? You're playing with the white pieces, and now you're... Uh, under a check. So your king is under a check and you, you need to figure out what to do here. So you can go to 
e8, you can go to g8. If you play the correct move and find the right pawn, you're going to win. If you don't make the correct move, then you're going to be in some, you know, going to have some difficulties. Could be some serious difficulties to convert this position into a win. So let's spend a couple of minutes and try to understand the differences between each king move. There is actually a sort of a rule about this kind of positions. If you know that rule, then you'll make the right decision. Anybody can tell me the reason why we have to choose one square over other? The, the main reason. Because we're going to need to get this bishop out of the diagonal to win it. Okay? Okay, the, the correct move is king g8. Okay? The reason this is the correct move because you see this bishop is on a long diagonal, right? I mean, it's got so many squares here. If the bishop is on that diagonal, you cannot win. You're going to need to force this bishop on a short diagonal. And which one is the short diagonal? This one. So the first idea here is going to be to kick the bishop from the long diagonal to the short one. Because he's going to be on a short one to make sure when you sacrifice, uh, when, you, when you promote the pawn, he can sacrifice. Okay? But then when he's on a short diagonal, your king is actually going to be guarding one of the squares, actually two squares. So all you have to do is you got to get him out of this third square. And then you can promote your pawn into a queen. Okay? So how are we going to get the bishop out of the long diagonal first? Step number one, let's get this bishop out of the long range diagonal here. Go ahead. What are you trying to do? No, but bishop is seven, I take. Think, think. Don't rush. You got it. First plan is to get the bishop. How do we get the bishop out of this long diagonal? Perfect. Perfect. That's very good thinking. Yes. So let's say he sits. You go bishop c3. Remember, that's the only way you can do it. He's going to sit, right? You're going to come up here. King is protecting the bishop. So he's going to come up here, and you're going to offer him the exchange of the bishops. If he takes it, then you win easily, because then you just step away and promote the pawn into a queen. You get a full queen. He's going to decline that. He's going to go here. Now... Arjun. Okay, think, think. Go ahead. Bishop to the where? To the short diagonal. There we go. But which square are you going to put the bishop on? Um, that could work too, but better square you have for that. Arjun. Bishop c5. Bishop c5. Now you're threatening to queen, right? Yeah. And you're covering this diagonal. So the only move is to go here. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you queen, you're going to win easily. So he cannot let you queen. Once you queen, you're going to win. And now, now you say, take my bishop. Because if he takes your bishop, your queen, and this is an easily winning position for you, okay? Queen versus bishop is very easily won. So he's going to go bishop g7, and now Arjun? Um, How do we put him into Suksuwang? Suksuwang, that's the idea. Go. Bishop g5. Bishop g5, bravo. Now, taken, taken. Bishop cannot go any of the squares, it will be taken. If the bishop takes here, you take this one, and you promote the pawn into a queen. That is a suksawang position. That's the final position of this game. And you win. So the, so the couple of steps you have to accomplish in order to win a position like this. You have to know that first thing we have to do is you have to keep your king on a square that you control the, on a short diagonal. So we go here to control the short diagonal squares. And the next step is to transfer the bishop there to exchange him. Okay? He's going to go away from there. And then you move away. And now he's on a short diagonal. Then you 
try to deflect him he has to go here and then you go bishop g5 and he cannot do anything you actually can play another move you can actually go even bishop here if you want bishop g5 just looks very nice you know because because if he takes your bishop you, you sort of like put him into suksuwang it's like nice nice way to finish it you know always remember you have to advance your pawn to the maximum that's the first step and then you gotta get the bishop away from the diagonal i'm gonna ask you a little tricky question here now we learned this right i'm gonna ask you a question on this see what you think i just what i did was i just moved it one you know one file away and now in this position it's white to play can white win this position that's the question can white be successful here uh huh okay arjun okay see it made a big difference by moving the pawn to one square the other direction now the short diagonal became a little bit longer here so he sits right same thing we do he gets here then he proposes this and now even though you have this two under control there is no way physically your bishop can control the both squares here so every time you go here i'm going to go here every time you're going to sacrifice your bishop i'm going to refuse the sacrifice so if you try to put me in a suksuwang, like do something like this, right? Try to do the suksuwang, then he just has which move? Bishop f7. Again, he goes here. If you take, he takes your bishop. Win. Here, you cannot go here, you can go, but now you have another win. What's the win? Uh, and what's the, what's the move to draw? Sorry. Yeah. Bishop h5. Only move, yeah? Bishop h5. By moving it away, we immediately see that, you know, even with a perfect play, by knowing that, it really has to be a short diagonal. The way to remember it is, is either three or two squares. If it's three or two, you can win. If it's, you know, if it's more than that, like here it's four, right? It's four. Four, you cannot win. Three or less, you win. If it's uh, four, it should be a draw. Go ahead. Okay? Okay, one more bishop endgame for you. White to play and win. So let's take a good look at this position because you're going to win this idea. It's not a very simple idea. You're going to win it with a very important sequence, okay, of moves to achieve the same position with, you know, slightly better version of this position for you, okay? actually sorry the original uh, original position is like this okay but okay I, you already see this so you know this is the first move mm -hmm. uh the re who can tell me here why black has to play king b6 why this is the only move here Try to see what I'm trying to do with this bishop move here. What am I trying to do here with the bishop move? Why he has to play the move king b6? That's the key. Why, what's, why is it so important to do that? Correct answer. Very good. You understand, right? If his bishop gets here, let's say you, you ignore my idea, right? I win easily because my bishop will get to a7. And I will move you away from the long diagonal. Then you go here, trade to queen. Once I queen, remember, you will win easily with the queen. So he has to sacrifice. And this is actually uh, the shortest diagonal the bishop can be on. And now what's the move here to deflect him? Bishop e3. Bishop e3, and you win very easily because he has to take. And this is an easily won position, okay?
you just basically queen and king move together and then you're going to probably fork and win his bishop. So this is, this is easily won. So that's why I have to try, I have to try to prevent this uh, bishop transfer, okay? So that's why I play the move king to b6. Now check, king to a6. So basically I'm trying to prevent your bishop from coming to b8. And it looks like it's going to be really difficult to do that here. But now you have a move here. The next move is very important. Bishop G1, the problem is I would refuse it because I stay on the long diagonal. I have plenty of squares to go to. So the next move is important because you're going to force his bishop to move. Yes. Very precise you have to be here. You can't just throw a move out there. It bishop might... Bishop c5. Bishop c5. Correct a waiting move because you want to cover the d6 square. If you didn't go there, then I have a bishop d6. Okay, so this is important. You'll see now why. King cannot move because that will allow the transfer of the bishop to kick the bishop away from the long diagonal, which is a win. We already learned that. So he goes here. Now, what do you do now? Now you're going to force the bishop on g3. It's very important. So now you go back. Now you're threatening to block him this way, right? So he's going to go back, the only way to defend that. And now you got the same position. He has to go here, otherwise bishop c7 wins. So you got the same exact position that we originally we started. The only difference here is bishop is on g3 and not on h2. And that is going to make a big difference now. Because you're going to win a tempo. Do you see the difference between these two positions now? Why it's so important to force the black bishop on g3 or some other squares on that diagonal? Uh huh. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. Yeah. So you start with the bishop h4. Now he cannot take, you're going to queen, right? So he has to go here or somewhere on this diagonal. Then you go bishop f2, f2. Okay? Now he doesn't have time to get to a6. So that tempo was very important. Now he goes here, go up, and now we know that we move the bishop away from the long diagonal to the short one. And once we do that, then we simply play the move bishop g1 and win. Okay? Okay, very good. So besides uh, the, 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 the famous petrosian Simagin game, we learned some bishop end games and how it works. I mean, it's really, uh, once you know about these positions where you have a pass pawn, it's very advanced pass pawn, this is the main idea. You got to move the bishop from the long diagonal to the short one. And now you know which positions are win, which positions are not win. So let's just uh, summarize, like, which posi positions for sure we know is a win if you have a pawn on a seventh rank and a king in a good position. Which positions? Go ahead. Um, yeah, short diagonals are, should be how many squares? Two, three or less. Remember this way, three or less, you can win. If it's, you know, more than three, even if you do the best technique, you're still gonna, you're not gonna be able to win if he plays correct defense. Go ahead.